table discussion. And I can tell you that all of our panelists were a little bit jealous. They want to be out in the shop. Right. Yeah, well, they're watching the video. They want to be out in the shop, obviously. And that's what we're going to talk. We're going to talk machining, a lot of assembly. We've been talking about competition racing engines. But really, uh, Rottler, our big sponsor here of the Engine Performance Expo, the machinist that gets things down to the, the microns, uh, if that is wrong, then the whole thing is going to be wrong. So I'm super excited about this. Talk a little best practices with our panel. Charles is back at Keebler. Ed, this is your first appearance. This is my first appearance. Like yeah. live. Yeah. Today. Today. Yeah. First live yeah. appearance. Live today. appearance yeah. today. We're going out to the bullpen. Of course, Cass is back. And Billy Godbold, who is, what'd you say? You've yet to uh, throw a monkey wrench into the works just yet. This year. This year. Right. You today. Know, which is today. Right. We have a whole another day tomorrow uh, exactly. to do it. But uh, interesting watching that process. And here at Straub, they've, they've got many different types of machines, many of them Rottler, Ed. And uh, this is your wheelhouse. So let's talk best practices. Yeah. So, so um, you know, when we're talking, I, I don't know what we do. We want to talk about a best practice on a particular block or a head or, 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 well, or I think just, the, just kind of. I think the biggest idea here is that obviously what we're really seeing is the industry trend yep. is more automation. Yes. Right. Obviously. Yeah. Um, no question. She had not seen that machine right. until what this morning. And now she's running it this afternoon. That's really impressive uh, to be able to pick up something that quick and easy. So I think the, obviously, if it's that easy to pick up running the machine, but there's a lot more you need to know. So back to the thought process behind, okay, yeah, you can touch the screen, but what's the thought process behind it and how to get ready to, to become a machinist in today's world where the machines are more automated and not so much manual? Yeah, no question about that. Well, I had a, uh, a gentleman call me yesterday from Canada, and he wants to purchase two or three machines. And he mm -hmm. says, do you think I'm capable of doing that? And I said, can you read a micrometer? Absolutely. He said, can you read dial board gauge? Yep. Can you do a, a dial calipers? Yep. I said, you're qualified. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, literally, the machines have gotten that simple to use, as we just saw. Mm -hmm. But you still have to have that background. You, you still have to be able to measure what you're machining. Mm -hmm. If you can't measure, then, then in my opinion, you, 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 you shouldn't be machining something. Remember the scientific term we said about trying to make something better than you can measure? Yes. 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 A sure. guess. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, you're yeah. absolutely right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 We have to be able to measure it before we can really make it that accurately. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's really nice when you can get someone to manufacture who's actually worked on a manual machine some. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times when we're putting so much coolant into an environment that you can't hear, smell, feel it the way you can if you're actually turning knobs by hand. Right. And so, you know, you want to understand that, you know, just because anyone can operate a machine doesn't mean anyone should be programming the feeds and speeds and how what are you doing on each thing you look at um you know something like honing and you know thinking about what is that grit actually doing at the bore you know some fundamental understanding if you don't have it yourself there's plenty of people in the industry that will will help you understand what's happening you know so you know don't be afraid that if you don't know you can know but it's not just as simple as you know what you said to what do you need to, to buy this machine it's a little bit more than a credit check right right yeah you know? <laughs> <laughs> well you, you know i i use the analogy i was <clears throat> talking to a a gentleman the other day and and it's actually in uh, in an industrial machine shop not automotive machine shop mm -hmm. and and you know we were talking about the uh, you know, I, I was lucky enough. I had people that mentored me on my way up, and, mm -hmm. and and instilled a bunch of knowledge. And and same thing, you try to do your children. You try to keep them from making all the mistakes that you made, right? But but uh, he he was saying, he goes, yeah, I had this guy, and he goes, he could be walking through the shop, and walk past a machine, and say, mm -hmm. you, you, one one of your flutes is chipped on sure. your end mill. Yeah. The guy goes, what? He goes, yeah, check it. He says, just go over there, and, or he'd pick up a chip. Out of the out of the chip bin, say, you got a chip flute on your end mill, mm -hmm. and that you know, and they're just blowing and going, and 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 they're not hearing it, and it's the same thing with anything. You know, I walk past a hone or I walk past a mill, and it's like, oh man, that's you know, something's wrong. Yeah, shut her off. <laughs> uh, but but um, 
you know, back, back to we're, we're trying to, at least from our perspective, and, and, and Cash, you can sed, shed some light on this, and Charles, I'm sure you can too, um, we're trying to make it simpler to operate equipment to where you don't have to have that vast experience and knowledge to to at least get started in this business. You know, you know we, we get you started in the business by pushing buttons, but hopefully by osmosis and being around people like Cass and Billy and Charles and okay. you and Joe and, and uh, you learn things. Okay, well, um, you know, I definitely have a lot to add to this topic because <laughs> uh, I'm getting to sit next to a very good dear friend now, but there was a time long ago that I didn't know him um, and I called up like this, uh, this guy in Canada that had the same question. And I said, uh, look, I've been on YouTube, which is always dangerous. You spend more money. No, <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so I got on YouTube and, you know, found some videos on Rottler machine equipment and everything else. And then uh, after, you know, digging and doing some research and watching other videos, which uh, were, were helpful, I call up a guy at Rottler and Ed Keebler answers the phone. Um, they somehow or another dispatched me to him and and I uh, said uh, something along the lines that uh, I don't think you were as nice with 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 me as you might have been with him but uh, it was something along the lines like I have no clue I've never done any engine machining before don't know what I'm doing um, but I definitely want to get in it because you know the machine shops messed me over over here and I got to do something about it and uh, you think you know I can do it and he said wait a minute let me get this straight you've never done any before uh, you don't have any past history of doing this, no, sir. Um, you don't know how to, me no, sir. You don't know how to do that, no, yes, sir. sir. Yeah, you can probably figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> I think I told him, no, don't do it. <laughs> no, I should have listened. No, but uh, in a, the HMI is everything, which is a human, a human machine interface, right? Right. Um, the claim to fame to Rottler is certainly just that. I, honestly, I don't work for Rottler. Those out there or that can watch. Uh, might see you can see it showed engineering performance I'm sorry I missed my you know my little uh, uh, ID we'll go, tag yeah. but uh, I could be a great sales rep for Rottler simply because I can tell you the experience that I had and starting out from the guy that like Canada you know I don't know anything what's it take to get to this point um, keep in mind that a lot of people don't understand that there's a huge difference between now we're at the engine performance expo mm -hmm. machining gets thrown into a big term now i'm a big fan of watching uh you, your uh facebook and things that's your part manufacturing a lot of the things that you do from alien awesome stuff that you guys do and i'm now doing a lot of part manufacturing as well as engine machining mm -hmm. too but there's a big difference between engine machining and part manufacturing and i'll think a lot of the uh, a lot of the fear factor comes from guys that go, okay, how am I going to learn? How, you know, I don't know how to draw in CAD. And then if I do, man, then this 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 CAM um, uh, software is, is overwhelming. And the thing that Rottler does is they pull in a lot of that. Um, they simplify it in terms of what we would consider in the machining world as conversational programming. Mm -hmm. uh, what that basically means is what you see is what you get. You want the bore to be three inch 500. Okay, you type in um, this is the center to center. This is the dimension that I want. It's just very simple in terms of uh, how it's laid out. It's, it's conversational. It literally asks you a question and you kind of fill in the blank. Yep. Um, so that's where Rottler has certainly done an excellent job uh, where it has appealed to, to guys that were just getting in. Because that's where I started, right. and now I program five-axis, and I do horizontal machining, five-axis machining, um, all that. But that taught me the fundamentals. Mm. And from there, I was able to move into a much more complicated stuff. Well, this right. story makes me think about you, Charles, right? Like, you didn't really want to yeah, get I all the really, machines. Yeah, I really didn't machines. want to get, get all the machines. I but was kind of forced into doing you it. You got on YouTube, too, didn't you? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so, with, so I outsourced all my manufacturing, and push come to shove, I had to do that all myself mm -hmm. and it was around 2014 decided i bought my first uh, cnc machine and hired a machinist luckily i was able to hire talent from where i used to have my stuff made 
and brought those people in and a good number of my team all are have been working and making my products for over uh, at least a decade, if not longer, not, all the way back to the beginning 20 years ago. So there's a lot of experience there, but getting younger people in, it, there's like, we're always trying to find new talent, have interns come in, give summer internships, and it's hard to find youth uh, that are interested in this field. And when you do get them, um, you want to latch on to them, but you have to give them that learning curve, pair them up with someone that ha has run manual equipment and knows when they uh, walk through the shop, mm -hmm. that machine doesn't sound right. We need to go look at that. Right. Um, you have to have uh, that knowledge, but on the flip side, the younger generation, they, they pick up the CAD CAM much quicker that. than the older guys mm -hmm. that uh, have been doing everything, started out with manual and just know how to just make it happen. Uh, and my guys are like, they want to learn Fusion 360. <laughs> we use uh, SolidWorks and we use MasterCAM. And they're like, well, can we use Fusion 360? I'm like, well, what does it cost? And it's cheap. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's mm -hmm. downright cheap. So I'm like, sure, let's go ahead and get it. And you guys take some time every day, play around with it. But the best way is to actually learn by doing. Mm -hmm. And and like you said, you have to have someone that has a knowledge. You can pass that knowledge along an apprenticeship, mm -hmm. uh, more or less. Um, that we just need to to get more people into this field because this is going to become more important. I was having a discussion, and we'll probably t talk about it another in the roundtable. Well, there the is a, there's, there's another round round table tomorrow, by the way. Yeah, 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 yeah there, there, there's another roundtable, but um, we're seeing with the OEMs pu push the electric that the all the suppliers are being forced to pivot, mm -hmm. and all the legacy internal combustion engine product lines mm -hmm. are falling by the wayside. So we need more aftermarket guys like us mm -hmm. to, to pick make, up that slack. Yep. Yeah. Well, great job. Great job. We're we're almost out of time for this round table. Late. We're almost. You, I could keep on going, right? Well, I, I just got the signal, right? Because right. I know we got another feature. But if you wanted to make a final point, I will. I, certainly I think may. that's what's fantastic about the new machines is to kind of summarize what we're saying is that because they are so easy to use, it makes it easy for someone that's new that doesn't have that background to be able to operate the machine and then the real synergy is bringing in that experienced machinist that can tell them oh that's what chatter sounds like mm -hmm. and then they can be, to learn how to be one with that machine that's very easy for them to work with and make it happen just like the old school guys were at one with their lathe at one with their with their mill because they could they could feel it they could hear it they could all that I think all that's still possible with the modern machines. It's just easier to teach the younger guys how to use something that's touchscreen or use mm -hmm. software so that they can still get to that point and probably do it more efficiently, which is, I think this is an incredible time to be getting into this industry, mm -hmm. which, you know, that's will be the setup for tomorrow's round table about education and apprenticeship and these kind of opportunities. So yeah, we're just getting started. It's day one. Day I haven't one, done yet. Just can all you kids out there that want to get into this field, obviously, you can just uh, call Ed Keebler. Yeah. <laughs> call, yeah. Stay off of YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Don't call this man. No, okay. no, absolutely. I'm glad you guys reconciled your differences, though. That was good. <laughs> he is, uh, yeah, uh, um, that was a great call. See, it is, it is possible. All right, on to the next video tech feature 101 coming at you. What a day, what a day, what a day. My, yeah, my, brain, my brain is swollen. I've learned so much today. He told us, don't start cars, we are not going to listen.